So let's have a look at the different types of viral hepatitis. So for each of these, we're going to talk about, first of all, the route through which patients can get infected and the type of hepatitis that it causes. So firstly, hepatitis A is a relatively common type of viral hepatitis. It spreads through the fecal oral route and it tends to cause an acute hepatitis, which in most people will resolve without too many issues. Hepatitis B, on the other hand, is bloodborne, and it can cause either acute or chronic uh, hepatitis B. And the important thing to remember about hepatitis B is that this is the one that we tend to use serology to be able to interpret uh, the status of a patient who may have been exposed to hepatitis B, or you want to know if they've been vaccinated in the past. Uh, serology questions come up quite often, and they um, are quite mind-boggling unless you're uh, unless you can understand exactly how a hepatitis B biology works. Hep C is again bloodborne, and it tends to cause chronic infection. And the way that we test for hepatitis C is by detecting its RNA. Hepatitis D is again bloodborne, and the interesting thing about hepatitis D is that it can only infect humans in the presence of hepatitis B. So this could be co-infection where uh, for example, an IV drug user uses a needle which is contaminated with both hepatitis B and D. Or it could be a super infection in which a patient who already has hepatitis B uh, somehow gets exposed to hepatitis D, which is then able to cause an infection. Hepatitis E, like hepatitis A, is fecal oral. And the key points you need to know about that is that it tends to cause severe illness in pregnancy and it tends to be acute as well. But the three main ones that we're mostly interested in are A, B, and C. So we're going to focus in on hepatitis B, mainly because that tends to constitute most of the questions that come up in exams. So here we have a representation of the hepatitis B virus, and there's a few components you can see inside. So you can see that there's some double-stranded DNA, um, there's an E antigen, there's a core antigen denoted by the C, and the red circles on the outside are the surface antigens. So the only point I want to highlight here is that the E antigen is not always present, but its presence is suggestive of active viral replication, and it suggests that the patient is highly infective. So then let's have a look at the response. So if someone gets infected by hepatitis B virus, there's a few different antibodies that are generated. So we generate surface antibodies, so usually written as HBSAB, and we also generate antibodies against uh, the core antigens, so HBCAB. On the contrary, vaccination for hepatitis B simply involves giving patients a little dose of the surface antigen alone. So you're not actually giving them the virus, you're just giving them the surface antigen, hoping that it will stimulate an immune response, and hence we will generate these surface antibodies. So now that you know that, you'll be able to sort of understand how uh, hep B serology works. So let's start from the right-hand side of this table. So if someone has been vaccinated, they've only been exposed to surface antigen. It has no capacity to reproduce, so it's not going to be present uh, a year after having the vaccine. Um, however, it will stimulate the generation of surface antibodies. And this is why patients who are vaccinated are only positive for surface antibody. If someone was infected with hepatitis B, but they cleared it, they would have got rid of the virus, so there's no longer any surface antigen remaining. However, they will have antibodies against surface antigen and against the core antigen. So they will be positive for surface antibody and core antibody. If someone is acutely infected, they will still have detectable surface antigen because the virus is still around. They may or may not have the E antigen as well, depending on the type of virus that they got. And uh, they won't have developed surface antibodies yet because not enough time has passed. However, they may have um, developed some IgM core antibodies. In chronic infection, they will still have surface antigen because there's still some active virus around. They will also have some surface antibody as well because there's been enough time for the body to mount an immune response and the class of the core antibodies will have changed to be IgG because it's no longer in the acute phase.